Hi, and welcome to another exciting edition of Game Development. My name is Nate Nessler, and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Uh, now, before we were talking about reflection shading techniques and the theory behind that. Now, uh, what we're going to do is start looking at how to do that. So, we're going to go ahead and code this shader right here. And let's go ahead and just do a little fly around. Okay, it's pretty cool. Now, here I'm just doing purely just a metal surface on this character. And, oh, well, okay, real quick, where can you get this character? Well, basically, you can get it from Turbo Squid. Um, you know, it's awesome. And uh, they have a female model on here that's just amazing that this guy has done uh, under people. And hopefully when you access this, that's around still. But uh, I bought her for $300 on here. I have some of my own characters that are really good too. But uh, this one was done by a uh, top quality um, 3D artist. And uh, he's amazing. Uh, he was he's a character artist for uh, game development and uh, you'll find a number of characters on here I'm not seeing her right now um, but yeah she was 300 bucks and she was one of the better ones on here without a doubt you'll see a host of other models and some of them are alright but uh, this one was definitely the best and uh, would highly recommend her but you might see some other ones in here that you like uh, but I just felt like she was by far the best model up here and was really well done uh, be careful of some others like that are um, like these kind of characters cool as they are you can't use them in your own production or whatever you get sued unless you are working for uh, the company that did Avatar um, so you know just be aware of that you can't just go off and make whatever you want because there are licenses and problems in that scenario. So if you were to buy a very nice model for that or whatever, you still wouldn't be able to use it in anything other than just to have it for yourself uh, for the heck of it. Um, yeah, I don't see it up here anymore. Maybe it's not up here anymore. Um, it was done in ZBrush. Uh, sometimes I just search based on the term ZBrush here and that's how I was able to find it and yeah it's gone okay so it's no longer for sale other place so you can get these other ones if you like um, it was a good one besides that uh, there's also uh, archive 3d so say you don't want to spend the money you can go to archive 3d dot net not dot com <laughs> dot net um, and in doing so, uh, you can go ahead and here and choose characters. Uh, now they have literally thousands of models and too much to even really talk about. But uh, we do have people and body parts and things of that nature, uh, and clothing and, and such. So you could literally take a character like this and load it in if you wanted a character, and then make them chrome, and that would look really cool too. Uh, but there's lots of characters in here and. Lots of stuff you could play with. Of course, you could just use any model you wanted, but you know it's whatever. So they got lots of different models in here, to choose from. Um, but having a high quality model is hard to come by usually for characters. Here's a skeleton that's really cool. Uh, that's always nice to have. Okay, well with that said, uh, let's hop back. But feel free to download something to use. Um, this character is quite nice, and. Um, let's move forward here so if I go ahead and play with this I can change a number of attributes here for like for instance the uh, diffuse color of course the more darker I go with it you know it's gonna give me a different look to it I could also go in here and change my specular color and play with it too which you can hardly tell a difference on this particular character <laughs> Um, and then also you can play with reflections and now you can see your specular better it just gets drowned out with the uh, reflections when they're turned up high Let's see I know they're there yeah they're there they're just not showing up as easily so if you want to make something semi reflective you can do that easily on here just by turning this up slightly 
Or if you want to make it very reflective, you can get it to basically like a metal mirror or whatnot. But there we go. And we're just doing a basic reflection one here first off, just getting started with this. Uh, but there's half reflection strength. And of course I can come in here and change up my uh, diffuse, pull it higher. Well, if I can get to click, there we go. <laughs> and there we are. So very cool. Um, you see you get this very metallic looking shader on here. Okay, so with this, here's uh, a breakout. I just made this one. The other one I made, I made a long time ago actually. It looks like about eight months ago I made it, exactly. Um, it was this one with the texture on it. And I did that one back when. It's almost, it's quite funny. I did it to the day of, uh, eight months ago. But anyways, um, so this is pretty much a Fong shader that's been, uh, it's a P VSPS one from previously. And we're just going to add in the reflection uh, algorithm for it. Now, the reflect has, uh, we have a special um, function for handling this, so we don't have to actually use the algorithm back from Maxima here. So instead of having to type out and use this algorithm here, they already have it pre optimized, computed directly inside of um, uh, NVIDIA's CGFX language. And so we don't really need to uh, put this in. Matter of fact, we're worse off if we do code up this function. So I'm not going to bother to do so, because in doing so, we will actually impose a slowdown in our shader. So we don't want to slow down our shader. We want to keep the performance up, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to use their built-in function. So that makes that easy. In some other languages, though, you may need to actually use that, um, fu that formula. So be aware of it. Um, it doesn't go away. And you may need to use it for, uh, if you're not using CGFX, say you're using OpenTL or something like that later on, you still will need to know those algorithms to use it for doing um, other types of reflections and things of that nature. If you're uh, coding for general purpose GPU processing. Um, we'll get into that eventually one day here. Um, but here we are. And so we need our world view projection. World view project proj for here, because I always like to use that one. Uh, world inverse transpose again I'm keeping it just like they do in their shaders here inside of the uh, CGFX uh, examples over here in the shader library I try to keep my shaders as close to the way they code theirs in this thing and the reason I do that so that way when you're done going through the series you can just immediately start picking up things and it's like deja vu and it's not suddenly oh I'm trying to remember oh I'm trying to reassign this trying to understand this as a different naming here or whatever so as close as I can keep it to that uh, to those examples from there, uh, the better off um, I think everyone is for understanding what's going on here. I am writing these shaders from scratch, but I'm going constantly back to uh, the shader library and double checking my stuff against it, trying to match it up as closely as possible to theirs. So, anyhow, um, alright, so we have world inverse transpose. Uh, world XF world here um, and then we're also going to do our view inverse here too so view IXF here is this one okay so that brings in all those so a lot of these should be familiar from well previously really uh, from just doing fog and then we have our light position here lamp so here comes our first light Using an oh, how did I get this background? Oh, yeah, you're probably wondering that where that came from. Um, all right, so that gets into our shader library, and basically it's this pre-QBG background. We're not going to get into this late right now, but later on I'll try to go over this and explain where that came from. Uh, right now I just want to use it because it's cool. It helps give a reference as to what's going on. But if you go through here, um, you will find lots of awesome stuff in here, matter of fact. We'll go through a bunch of this stuff. Uh, won't cover everything, but we'll go through a bunch of it. Uh, this one right here, pre-cube background. So if you click on CGFX and then say, yeah, load it in, and then drag and drop this into your background, not into your character, but into the background here, then it will uh, put this into your background, and then you'll suddenly have this awesome background with NVIDIA. Uh, looks like their business location here. Yeah, because it has NVIDIA on the wall. It's really cool very awesome look at layout and the building and everything uh, but it's a gorgeous uh, environment map 
and it looks amazing. So yeah, you know, definitely uh, feel free to play with that and have a look at that as uh, I think it will make a big difference. Okay, so with that said, let's uh, go back to our editor here by clicking on that and let's continue on. Now, so we have our lamp here, so we already did that. It's the same as before from your other shader. Nothing new there to cover. So I'm not really going to bother to go back over this since you already have it from your other shader. Please copy your uh, code from your uh, Fong uh, VSPS one without the texture in it. This is the one you're going to copy and paste into here. And you're just going to go over here and say create effect and then name it Fong Reflection VS underscore PS dot CGFX. So, so far we've had nothing new here. We have our ambient here. So this is our global ambient. This shouldn't be anything new either. And um, this lets us up our ambient shadow and color. And I have a ambient turned pretty low. Uh, and then we get over here to our KA. This is our ambient attribute. And my apologies. Let me come back here and click on the shader so we get back to these values here. Alright, so there's our KA. We're setting up our color here for our UI widget. Again, this is nothing new. This is the same as on the Fong. Ambient color here. And then we're saying here, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. All the way down the line here, 1.0. No big deal. And then KD here. So KD is our diffuse color. And so we're saying string UI widget equals, in quotes here, color, close quotes, semicolon, and same thing as before, uh, you know, we're just doing this whole diffuse thing. Again, it's set to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, you know, 1.0. So again, nothing new here. Then we get down to our specular, KS. Again, nothing new because this is coming from Fong. Specular power, again, nothing new, came, came from Fong. But then we get to a new attribute that is new. And what is new here is this KR here. The KR is for our reflection. All right. So, and this is a typical uh, term in mathematics for reflection. So, be aware of it. Oh, I'm gonna put that there because I'm picky that way. Um, all right. So we're gonna do a float here, KR, and then open uh, greater than sign. And this is just going to be a value that we uh, slide back and forth as a slider because uh, we don't want to do it as a color. So we're going to do string UI widget equals slider in quotes here, semicolon. And then we're going to say float UI min here equals 0.0, .0 semicolon. And then float UI max equals 1.0, semicolon. And we're going to do float UI step here equals 0 0.01 semicolon so that we can get some accuracy on it. And then string here, UI name equals, and what we want to name it. And I said reflection strength, or you could say reflection value, or something of that nature, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in quotes here, reflection space strength, close quotes, close semicolon. I figure an artist is going to know what that means. And we're doing it between a value of 0 and 1, which makes sense. So basically, uh, no reflection is zero, and then 1.0 would be total reflection of 100%. And so here I'm setting a default halfway uh, value here of 0.5. Okay, so let's move on down. And there's something new also besides just the KR here for a reflection. Okay, so check it out. Inside of our textures, we now have a new one here. We actually have a texture category. We didn't have that before. We need to add that. Uh, so I just did this little layout right here to make it all pretty. And then I said texture here, EMV texture colon environment open greater than sign string resource name equals in quotes default underscore reflection dot DDS close quotes semicolon. Now this is a really nice texture, so go ahead and use this one. It's great. It comes with NVIDIA, it looks amazing. Go ahead and use it. String here, space UI name 
equals, in quotes here, environment, close quotes, semicolon. And then string resource type equals, in quotes, cube, close quotes, semicolon. Now this is important because we are doing a cube map. So I'm hitting, same thing here, this is an environment texture of type environment. So it comes in as a very special texture, okay? Close, greater than sign, well, less than sign, yeah, something like that. Semicolon here, uh, sample, sampler cube. You know, I have to do a sampler cube, this is important, this is different than a regular sampler. It has to know how to uh, do the lookup values. So cube is going to be different than a regular texture. So then we have environment sampler equals sampler underscore state, open curly brace here. And then we have texture equals open uh, greater than sign, EMV texture, close greater than sign, or less than sign, semicolon. Uh, and then this gives us um, our environment texture. Now, um, as you remember, environment texture name is up here. So this is referencing this one here. And then we have a mag filter equals linear semicolon. And then min filter is equal to linear mit map linear. Yep, it literally is linear mit map linear semicolon. That's not a mistake. Uh, wrap S equals clamp to edge semicolon. Wrap T is equal to clamp to edge semicolon. And wrap R is equal to clamp to edge semicolon. Now, I failed to explain this, and someone brought this up to me uh, in some previous videos. And I never explained what S and T are, and I really should have, and didn't think about it because I'm kind of used to this stuff. So, my apologies. Um, basically, what is S and T? S and T is basically you're remapping UMV as S and T. Here's the thing you can't actually modify UMV, they cannot change. So, what can you do? Well, you can actually modify though S and T and then assign it back to UMV for remapping the surface. So then basically what this allows you to do is let you repeat a texture this way or something of that nature. But UMV are hard coded in. You can't change them. They they are the UMVs of the actual surface for the model. But you can manipulate uh but if you assign them to a separate set of variables like S and T and then assign them back to UMV uh, you can manipulate S and T. Now S and T respectively map as S goes for U and T goes for V. Um, and in doing this, this allows you to manipulate uh, those coordinates. And that's really important. And those are standard names throughout the industry. I don't care if you're talking about film or games or whatever. Everybody calls it, refers to it as S and T when you're modifying U and V. So make sure uh, you always use uh, S and T for the names right here. So that's why they're talking saying wrap S and wrap T. Uh, in the case of wrap R here, this is a third one. So you got S, T, and R. R is going to be a third coordinate for three dimensional coordinates here. And because we are doing an environment map, we do actually have, you know, uh, three dimensional coordinates. Think of it as like X, Y, Z uh, for lookup here, where, you know, S and T is like X and Y, you know, and then, uh, well, basically R would be Z more or less, if you want to think of it that way, uh, from a coordinate system perspective. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. So, um, you know, when we're doing S and T, we're just doing 2D uh, lookups for UV mapping previously. Uh, but when we're doing three-dimensional lookups here for our mapping, we're talking about three-dimensional images, which is what we're talking about when we're doing a cube map, then we actually have to have a third variable to allow us to, allow us to do 3D a coordinate system and that's what R is here so we're going to do a wrap R and so we're going to be mapping that to that to uh, wrap R also okay so we're going to end up with a closing curly braids and a semicolon and again my apologies for not going over this earlier as I um, just didn't even think about it but anyhow there you are and if you ever look at um, Pixar Render Man for its uh, shading stuff, they actually do a breakdown in the Render Man Companion book uh, in there of the S and T versus the UMV and having it remap and all this. So, you know, some interesting things like that. Also, you can save uh, computation by not having the um, 
oh, uh, clipping set beyond the uh, your clip planes set beyond your scene. So like basically you only have them fit within your scene and not a whole lot of extra space there so that way you're not computing a bunch of extra space. It speeds up your calculations. The same thing could happen in games too. So you kind of want to fit those around your environment as close as you can in order to keep your speed up for your games so you're not doing excessive computations that aren't needed. All right. And in out parameters struct vs in open curly brace float 3 position colon position semicolon float 4 normal colon normal semicolon close curly brace semicolon so just as before we're doing a struct in and this works here fine for passing in these variables and values I like my structs and then here we go for our struct out so our vs struct out here float position here colon position semicolon and I don't have one for, of course, my textures. So I'm just doing uh, LW, NW, and VW for our different parts here. And so that's important. Close curly brace semicolon struct VS out here. Open curly brace float color colon color semicolon. Close curly brace semicolon. Again, this is all the same. This shouldn't be anything new. Shouldn't be anything different than what you had before. All right, so let's hit up our vertex shader. So here's our vertex shader now. And VS out here, space out, semicolon here. And of course, we're just passing in our main VS here with our VS out for our return. And VS in is the in variable here in the caps. And then we're doing our VS out as out and then semicolon. So again, nothing new. All right, so we have float four, and this is our uh, point in object space. Okay, equals float four here i n dot position x y z comma one close parentheses semicolon because of course we need that position, and then float three here p w or point in world space equals multiply world x f here p o comma p o close parentheses dot x y z. Now remember this is a float 4 which makes it a 4 variable vector of x, y, z, w. And this right here is a matrix, a 4 by 4 matrix. Now which matrix is this? This is going to be our world matrix. Yep. And so this shouldn't be anything new but going over it anyhow. Um, and of course that gives us a remaining uh, four by one uh, uh, vector as because this basically acts as a four by one matrix here being multiplied by this four by four matrix here and the result is a four by one matrix which is the same thing as a vector so we're going to drop off the remaining value off the end of that four uh, component vector there and just get three uh, components which would be x y z going into here and we're dropping W off because we don't care. W just be 1O and we don't need it. Okay, so from here we're getting our, our world space normal. So out dot uh, NW equals what? Multiplying times the inverse transpose um, and then times our normal. So X, Y, Z, W. So this gives, it, gives us to a nor, uh, world space here for our normal. And then our light position we're going to calculate it in world space. So we're saying what? The distance between our light and the point on the surface. There's our vector. Yeah, well, the resulting vector, anyways. Not the distance, but the resulting vector. Basically, it has a distance in there because of the magnitude. But, anyways, same thing for view inverse transpose as world inverse transpose here. So we're going to say um, for our view in world space, we're going to say normalize. And so this is going to be in world space, but also be normalized here. Float view ixf here, open bracket zero here. So what are we extracting out? All the, yep, you got it. This gives us our transform x, y, 
and Z because it gets the final bottom ones on the right hand side. Don't forget about that on the matrix. If this is confusing, go back to the Fong shading um, videos and the Lambert shader videos where I break this down for the mathematics and how we're extracting those values out of the matrix. So, but we're just grabbing them right from that column there for our translate uh, matrix uh, values. So, you know, X, TX, TY, TZ going down on the right hand side. That's where the W is. And so that's what we're grabbing it. If you go back and look at those videos, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, PW. Oh, all right. I'll just show it real quick. I just don't feel like. Uh, Ah, I'll do it. I'll show it real fast. Really, really fast. Alright, so TX, so let's talk about TY and TZ straight down the side here. So that's what we're grabbing out of this matrix here. Uh, and of course, W is going to put it on this column here on the outside. And we're just accessing those values straight down. So this would be X, Y, and Z for you know zero one two b x y z all right for and then subtract from our point in world space all right so it gives us our point in world space we subtract it and we're normalizing so we only get the direction for the view all right so now we know what angle we're looking at awesome and then out dot position here multiplied times world view projection comma uh, object space here and so that gives us our out position here in object space with the world view projection matrix. Okay, cool. And then we're just returning the out. And now we're getting to our pixel shader here, or fragment shader, whatever you want to call it. Uh, PS out here, main PS, we have VS out as our in, IN variable getting passed in, of course. Open curly brace here, FS out, space out, semicolon. Float three ln equals normalize open parentheses in dot lw close parentheses semicolon float in in so again we're normalizing our normal here so it's going to become in in so normalize in dot nw because why because this is a world space yep normal here float rn equals normalize in dot vw plus ln close parentheses semicolon so again here's our R and we are normalizing it for our reflection vector alright and the end there is to note that the fact that it's been normalized float for here lit V equals lit so of course we're using the whole uh, lit algorithm in order to calculate our, our um, specular and such for um, uh, fong shading. So dot here, open parentheses ln comma n n, uh, close parentheses comma dotted with our r n comma uh, n n, close parentheses comma spec power here, close parentheses semicolon. So now let's set up our ambient. So lit v dot x times, um, you know, actually this wasn't necessary for the lit v part. I remember right. Yep, no visual change. And that's because if you remember right, lit uh, v dot x comes back as a 1 0. So it's always just going to be times 1 0, so it's pointless to even do the multiplication. And that's going to cut it out of the calculation just to save speed and time. Uh, no point in calculating something that's not going to make a difference and just eat up computation time. No matter how simple it is, I'm just going to strip it out. So ka.rgb times global ambient dot rgb semicolon. Here float three diffuse equals lit v dot y times lamp zero color semicolon. All right, so this gives us our diffuse attribute, and let's grab our specular. So we're going to take our diffuse attribute for its return here, and then multiply it times our specular one that's returned here, times our KS RGB times our lamp zero color semicolon to get our specular. All right, and then we're going to say diffuse color equals KD dot RGB, because I'm not using the texture one, which works fine. We'll uh, do it later here next, matter of fact. All right. And then let's get our reflection vector here. So this is what's going to be the actual reflection and not um, 
a reflection vector based off of uh, for a lighting scenario for this is for our fong here for our specular this is an actual reflection coming from the view bouncing off um, the surface coming out so this is what we'll actually see in our reflections here and then that's what we want happening okay so we're going to say r is equal to negative reflect here and we're going to use that reflect function and we do need to put a negative in front of it because we need to inverse what it gives us um, and then we're going to do in dot vw comma nn for our normal so yes we're crossing this with our we're doing the reflect with the normal so that way it knows the normal of the surface and it can give us the uh, other vector for a reflection off of that surface based off of the normal so very simple um, of course we know this whole formula come over here it's basically using um, this formula right here so it saves us a lot of trouble so again this is why you have to have this it's your normal and your incidence your incidence here is your view so again it's coming from the view bouncing off of the surface view bounce off surface and our return here is going to be R so that's why we have to pass in the V and the N so it can figure out what R is and that's what that uh, function is doing okay so with that we're going to say float 3 here reflect color equals kr times text cube open parentheses emv sampler comma r dot xyz close uh, parentheses dot rgb semicolon all right what is all that well basically we are using this in order to do a lookup we're using this as a vector to look up the value on the actual map and it will do this RG, XYZ is a lookup for the uh, value as its position in the uh, EMV sampler, environment sampler. Now remember they had ST and R in there, right? So that gets uh, remapped here for X, Y, and Z for your lookup and then you're able to find, it's able to find the coordinates for where that point is based off of that those positions in 3Space. So again, remember how this works this comes out and it's basically saying hey this vector points to a particular point on the surface uh, well on this texture and we're just saying a hey, it's pointing to this pixel here so that's basically what that piece of code is doing It's finding the pixel in this environment to look it up to make it you know apply to the surface and that's what's happening for that reflection vector so it finds the uh, the pixel and re we return it as an RGB here so it's going to be red, green, and blue and we're multiplying at times our KR for our reflectivity so how reflective is it right so we're going to either dull or bring that up in value so that's where our reflection strength comes into play so I can now you know go in here and make it less reflective or way more reflective or whatever and that totally depends on you know what my KR is going to be multiplying times the return to pixel on it and of course we're doing this across all the pixels in the image simultaneously here so you know we're basically computing this all across at once pretty cool really uh, out dot color equals float four open parentheses and we're going to do our specular plus our open parentheses diffuse color times KD dot RGB times open parentheses diffuse plus ambient close parentheses plus reflect color close parentheses comma 1.0 f close parentheses semicolon return out semicolon close curly brace alright and so that finishes that one up there and now we go into our uh, techniques here and we just do our technique and of course it's going to use both our vertex and our fragment and nothing has changed here it's all the same uh, nothing to do here really it's the same as what we had before and this gives us our reflection shader um, very cool and this is just a regular basic reflection shader this doesn't have an actual texture map for a diffuse but um, let's go ahead and do that real quick so to create another one oh, I feel like doing more reflection how about like a point eight maybe point eight would be cool yeah, point eight looks nice. All right, so let's look at a different one here. So that's Fong Reflection, but what if we were to do uh, our diffuse texture, what would that look like in here? That's Reflection Refraction. Maybe I'll cover that here in just a bit. 
Um, or I wrote that one up too. <laughs> um, no, I did that one too. Hold on a second. <laughs> I've done a bunch of shaders in here. Okay, so yeah, this one's the one with the actual texture here for our diffuse. And this is really cool because now we actually can apply a texture for our diffuse in addition to our reflections. So you can see we still have the same reflection strength here. You can turn it down and have just that texture being applied to our character here. Or, you know, of course there's no light hitting it from the other side, so you're not going to see squat there. Or, you know, we can turn this up really high, get very metal metallic light. So this lets us mix and play where we can actually have a texture for the surface along with, you know, the actual metallic reflections too. Alright, so let's look at how we do that one. So copy and paste your um, this is really easy actually. If you want to get uh, make this easier on yourself, uh, the easiest thing to do is to go into your Fong VSPS with texture and then copy and paste it from here. If you like, it doesn't matter. You don't have to. You can just keep you can copy and paste this uh, reflection VSPS if you want and then expand this one out it doesn't matter I don't care either way that would work too this one has got all the nice comments so maybe you want to do this one here just because it's prettier alright well anyways um, and so from here I'm just going to go in here and change this up not much at all so the only thing I need to add to this is the same as before as your reflection one here. Fong reflection VSPS. Let's so copy and paste this one and it'll be easier. Um, and it's all the same. <laughs> Literally. Only thing we need to add right here under textures is this part right here. So add texture, color texture. If you want to be lazy about it, you can come over here real quick from this one and you can copy and paste it. So come over to that one right there, select this right here, hit control C, come over here, and then you know just type and hit control V to paste. And then that will put in this color texture and the color sampler. And there you go. We've already done this, that's all you have to do. Grab that, pop it in there, bam, you're ready to go. Okay, so now that's in there. Great. And now you don't have much left else to put in there. A uh, few things we need to do. We need to put back in here float4 uv colon text chord 0 semicolon. So that needs to go back in there. Why? Because we need uv coordinates for our texture here, for a diffuse texture. All right, cool. Don't forget you could also set up a specular texture if you like. As a matter of fact, you get really cool results with that if you did. Uh, we haven't done that one yet. Maybe we'll pop in there and do that in another video. But anyhow. Here we are with our UVs for texture coordinates. So struct VS out here, open curly brace, uh, float to UV colon text chord zero semicolon. So again, this is our UVs going out. Uh, we need that one in there, and then we're going to have for our LWs now going to be text chord one, our NWs going to be text chord two, and our VWs now going to be text chord three because before it was zero, one, and two, but they need to be changed to one, two, and three because zero is going to be for our UV text core zero. Right? So we gotta change those numbers up of course. Alright. And then this stays the same. And this all stays the same. Except one part. We need to add this line right here. Out dot UV equals IN dot UV dot XW semicolon. Yep. So we need to pass that back. All right, so that way we pass our UVs through. We're not doing anything to them, we're just passing them through. So there we go. Okay. And then this is identical to all the way down the line till we get to one part here, and that is this diffuse color here equals text chord. Um, a diffuse color equals text 2D open parentheses color sampler comma in.uv.rgb semicolon. Now 
there is one downside to this and that is um, and then this formula is the same right here this doesn't change for any of the rest of the stuff all this the rest of the stuff is the same but right now if you notice if I come in here and I say diffuse color it actually works sorry not a downside it works fine I've multiplied it through a later spot here yeah it's right here sorry the KD is right here So yeah, by having it in this diffuse texture one here, right here, it takes care of it. So put your diffuse texture in there, and you also have your KD controlling. I'm sorry, I forgot that I put it in the other spot. <laughs> well, I coded it like uh, like I said. Oh, that looks cool. Uh, I coded it eight months ago, so I didn't remember. But yeah, KD is right here, so I don't have to worry about it. I just saw that. I was like, oh wait, no, it's there. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so now we got everything we need uh, for making this work fine. And then this gives us this texture-based diffused metal. Uh, and then we can also do our coloring however we like on it, in addition to it. So with that, that covers uh, PS, uh, VSPS type uh, reflections and materials uh, for diffuse texture and non-diffuse texture with an environment cube um, and how to put an environment cube into your background. Um, later here. Uh, we may cover the VS reflections, it may not. I still haven't decided yet on that. Um, I might code those up. Um, it can be useful for certain circumstances where you need to use nothing but vertex and you can't afford the PS part, but you know, to each his own. We also got some other techniques I need to go over still on reflections. Um, this is just a basic reflect, but even with the basic reflect it looks really good. Um, there's some other things too uh, that we need to discuss and look at here in the uh, next set of videos. So um, we'll see what we can get to. Also there's some limitations. Maybe I can get around them with um, some deferred shading or something like that. Um, with uh, doing some passes. Maybe I can pull it off that way. Otherwise, not really sure um, it's doable. Uh, with inside of FX Composer for uh, glass uh, necessarily. I got something but I'm not happy with it and the problem we have is the fact that it needs to use passes with it in order to make it come off right. So maybe here later on I'll cover the other one that I've done. Um, it may not. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but we'll see. I don't even see it right now, so I'd have to hunt it down. Oh well, it's in there somewhere. Um, but anyhow, with that, that covers reflections. Um, and this has been another great video for CG shader programming for game development. Uh, my name is Nate Nessler, and this is for Hyperactive Studios. Thank you very much.